Good evening, all. Welcome to Conversations That Count. Happy Easter to all of you. Thank you for joining us this evening. I am Shreeli Kapale, Fairfax GOP Vice Chair of Strategy and Engagement. Our goal through this program, Conversations That Count, is to bring in candidates that are running for primaries so you can get to know them better and learn about the issues that you care and they care about. Please note that 11th Congressional District Convention and Firehouse Primary is on Saturday, May 7th. While the conversations are going on, feel free to chat with us by putting your questions in the comment section. I will try to get to as many questions as I can and ask the candidates about your issues and concerns. Continue to support these conversational sessions by subscribing to Fairfax GOP Facebook page. Now, let's get to know our candidate for today. It is my utmost pleasure to introduce fellow Indian American, Manga Anantatmula. Manga Anantatmula is a first generation immigrant from India and is running for Congress in the 11th Congressional District. Manga moved to US legally with her husband to pursue the American dream and with her young son. The family worked very hard to pull themselves up and believed in individual responsibility, self-reliance and hard work and taught these same values to their young son. Today, Manga San proudly serves the nation as LCDR in the US Navy. Manga worked with the Department of Defense and DHS, which proved to be her most rewarding and patriotic experience. Uh, that could be the reason that motivated her to run and serve this nation. Welcome, Manga, to Conversations That Count. Thank you, Srileka, for having me on your show. I, uh, I couldn't thank you enough. And I really um, uh, have this opportunity to talk with you and your audience. And I'm really thrilled and I'm glad to be here with you today. Absolutely, Manga. Manga, you ran in 2020, and I know we worked quite a bit during that time as well. You have established name recognition. I can tell you that several people, when I'm out uh, in the community, people uh, ask if I am Manga, and I have to respectfully say I'm not. Manga is the one that ran for the congressional seat and so on and so forth. So I know that you have established good name recognition. So uh, my question to you is, uh, the, uh, from 2020, the issues have changed drastically. The community has changed, the global politics. In fact, the national politics, as you know, has changed. And Virginia has changed for better. So I guess my question to you is, are you running on similar issues that you ran in 2020 or has issues changed considering that all the changes that happened in 11th Congressional District? Well, that's a great question, Srileka. Actually, the issues have not changed since 2020. They just started in 2020. And even before the TJ issue had started, uh, I've started my activism in 2015 about equal education opportunity and meritocracy. And uh, I believe admission process where Asians have been uh, discriminated uh, against. So uh, I've been a forerunner in these issues and they just surfaced. I've been warning people, this is coming. This is coming to our communities faster than we think. But uh, people were in denial uh, until it has happened because they trusted this country and the system. I mean, the very fact that you know, uh, you and I know that uh, people were in denial because they trusted the system to do what is right for the children, what is right for their best education and the families. But it came as a shock, but it wasn't a shock for me because I have always been involved since 2015 on this issue and I know it was coming. Uh, it was just a matter of time. Uh, my effort was to stop that from happening, but I could have been able to do that uh, if I had everyone believe in what I believed. But, uh, but that's okay. I mean, now I have taken a different approach uh, asking because the damage has already been done. Uh, we are now in that fighting mode to get back our uh, freedom that we have lost and the two decades of uh, indoctrination of generations of our kids. So uh, it, it's even more important for us to now start paying more attention to politics 
you know, that this act, the very same activism that I was believing that uh, everyone need to pay attention to, I, I felt the need that it has now come to a point where politics is playing a bigger role, uh, more predominantly than we think uh, that it is playing. So now it has become very obvious. So now uh, I'm glad parents and everybody is paying attention to politics. And that's exactly where we are. So that in a way did not change my platform. I've always been school choice because I believed uh, uh, the meritocracy is going away and we need to do something about it. And I want to create school choice for parents uh, to take their children to any school they want, either it is a private school or a charter school or a, a parochial school. Uh, we have been spending, uh, we are still spending 15 to $18,000 every year uh, on students uh, for, for public schools, but then we don't have a choice and uh, we are all stuck uh, in having to send children to only public school because we don't have any options. So I was a big proponent of school choice with a coupon. Whatever the government is spending on public schools, let that money follow the child to the school, the parent's choice where they want to send their child as a coupon. Um, that way we are creating more schools, more competition, and that way parents will be in more control of the curriculum and the school and let the public schools also compete uh, for the tax dollars we are spending on students. And then the focus will start shifting on the curriculum and not the social engineering and sexual content uh, that they are teaching and uh, transgenderism and everything that they are teaching now. But uh, now that we are not a woke culture, we are really awake. So, uh, our priorities are shifting and our focus is shifting. And now politics is the one that we need to stay very engaged in and start electing more responsible uh, representatives and not the ones for the namesake who are sitting and doing nothing for our communities and parents. Manga, I agree with you. I think education platform definitely hasn't changed. <laughs> and I also agree with you that issues were all, always there. I think with pandemic, one good thing that came out of pandemic is people, parents started realizing, they started seeing what the curriculum is all about. But I have to give you kudos for one thing that you really didn't acknowledge while you were speaking about uh, education. You were probably by far in our community, especially when I say our community, Hindu community, where you recognize the importance of a Harvard Law Student. I remember you going to Boston, trying to raise some funds, uh, trying to see how we can help the Chinese community who took the lead on Asian American yeah. education of fair admissions. So you definitely yeah. recognize the value of education, education. and education being an issue. They were ba yeah. way back in five, five years storm. Um, yeah, now exactly. Coming from uh, the Indian background and my husband came here as a student and we lived, we chose Fairfax County for best school system that it was and the quality of life and uh, the public safety. And uh, I always believed in America first agenda. Even in my last 2020 race, I was the candidate who ran on America first agenda and school choice and pro parents. So I, I absolutely, it did not change. I think I've always been that forerunner uh, having that foresight and uh, I'm doing the same thing. And of course there are more things that we need to pay attention to in this cycle. And I think I, I even there too, I am uh, far ahead of uh, other candidates that are running in this race. Manga, another thing that I think you're slightly ahead of other candidates, at least from what I see, because I have been following you on social media platforms, uh, you courageously oppose Jerry Connolly. I have seen one more candidate do that, uh, which I think is a positive step because you've got to be in the fight in order to fight, right? right. You can't be a sideliner. And I, I definitely see you as a fighter and I admire that, I admire the courage. However, more often than not, feel free to disagree with me. I've not seen you talking about the specific 
policies of uh, Connolly, we, uh, the policies that you oppose, and not only the policies that you oppose, but I also would love to see more of your policy prescription. What is it that you will do differently than what Connolly is doing and voting for? And uh, how will you differ from his failing policies? I mean, if you wouldn't mind taking the next few minutes to kind of elaborate on just one or two of his failed policies and how will you do differently as in policy prescription? That would be great. Well, uh, uh, if I have to talk about failed Connolly policies, I can show this many pages of his failed policies. You know, it's not, there are countless of policies that he has failed in. Uh, and let us or not forget that he came into politics and won this district in Obama wave. Let's start with that first. He, he came to power not by virtue of his leadership qualities, but only in the Obama way. And what is so good about Obama uh, era that we have seen in the two terms of Obama? They're all failed policies. That's where this list is coming and this is endless. And my list is growing since he has taken office. Um, where do we start? Okay, let us start from the recent happenings. Um, um, uh, Ketan G. Johnson nomination to Supreme Court. And he was supporting and he was saying that it, it, she, she belongs in Supreme Court and she has the voting record of supporting and her verdicts on child porn criminals are very, very poor. She is very lenient towards child, child porn criminals. So that is her record. And, my, and Jerry Connolly is supporting that. So it is just not um, um, like you're perceiving they are just uh, reactions. That is not what we as conservatives believe in. We do not, we respect the dignity of our children. We want to protect our children. I mean, the very fact that parents were very, very so much involved in 2021 election is the very same reason because they were being exposed to sexual content that they, have, they never should have been um, and the curriculum that they are being exposed to and uh, transgenderism. These are the things that we as conservatives don't believe in. It is needless to say, I oppose this because that's a very bad policy. Are we going to sit back and let our children be exposed to that content and a sitting congressman is openly on Twitter supporting a judge to be nominated to become the Supreme Court uh, judge who is very lenient toward child uh, sex abuse. These are the things that I oppose. I mean, Twitter is a very different beast. We need to be on top of the current affairs that are happening to be able to react and say, I oppose this, I condemn it. And then take Afghanistan situation, the way the troops were withdrawn and nobody condemned. And he supported, Obama, I mean, Biden administration for uh, withdrawing our troops from Afghanistan and then Obamacare. So what, and, and he every time voted yes for everything that Obama's policies were. What's, what's so good about Obamacare? It ruined our healthcare system. Yep. It put more Americans in the health care industry to suffer silently not knowing who can really help them. That's how much our healthcare system is screwed. We need change. And I can also talk about the way he supports the skin color and the division of people. And that is exactly the CRT that we are so against. So these are the issues that I always take on when I oppose him. 
And even during the Afghanistan time, not only that he supported, he did not have any objection to leaving our billions of dollars worth of military equipment and ammunition that can be used against Americans. It can be used against our children, our families, our grandchildren. Maybe in future, this would be coming. So irresponsible. So these are the things. And I think I was the only candidate who had the courage to have a rally in front of White House to condemn Jerry Connolly, to condemn Biden administration, and to condemn this present administration. So uh, I think uh, these are the things that I always oppose. I can have a whole list of things that I oppose uh, that are, are conservative values that these people are against. So, I mean, there I go. I mean, uh, I'm against everything and he's a Pelosi puppet and now He's a Pelosi puppet. Now that Biden is not in a position to make any sound decisions for this country. And what about the Ukraine decision and peace talks that he was involved in? Did anybody know that it was Jerry Connolly who, who, who had the talks with Ukraine before the war and he could have stopped? And that is a failed talk. That is a failed diplomacy talk. And now India had picked up on that and they became the world leaders to stop the, the, the uh, fiction between Russia and Ukraine. Yeah, and it so should have been the United States. Yes. Yes. We're going to get into multiple issues of those. I think one thing that I can point out is uh, when you ran in 2020, he voted to terminate border wall emergency declaration, which is yes. to terminate President Trump's declaration of an emergency at the US-Mexican border which allowed him to bypass Congress and reallocate funds to build a border wall. I think uh, we right. could start from there. And of course, we can kind Every of pick day. on federal policy. I think um, uh, if I were you, I think the focus should be on uh, what are his failed policies and what would you do differently? But let's stay on Connolly. I mean, um, as I said, this goes live on Facebook and we've had uh, multiple comments very focused on the uh, number of votes that we were able to get in last time. In 12, 2012, Jerry got 61% of the votes. In 2018 and 2020, he received over 70% of the votes. Uh, um, what do you think we are doing wrong that they are doing right? Because and these are the questions that I'm getting on Facebook with saying that we lost 71 to 28. We lost by huge numbers. Uh, we had huge Trump supporters that went and uh, voted for Jerry. Why would uh, why do, why do this particular candidate need a second chance? So would love to get your perspective. We, we all would like to support every candidate that wants to run, but why you? Uh, I think would that would be a great way to so, elaborate. I mean, my question is why not me? I have the most name recognition. Uh, I I put my face to the voters every single day during 2020 and 2021. Uh, uh, and actually the numbers that people are throwing, 71%, uh, 28%, that is not true at all. Uh, the, the real numbers are 29.3%, even after stealing. Uh, and uh, I won, I carried precincts, which no GOP nominee ever carried since 2010. And I got the maximum, I mean, more number of raw votes. I mean, this between 2012 and it was progressively becoming blue district. And in a progressively blue district, me breaking the raw vote record is a huge thing. And I did not just simply get those raw votes. I, the minorities supported me. The several minority communities that I'm engaging with, they all support me. The way I have penetrated into several tens of minority communities who never have voted, they have come out to vote. And I think in 2020, I made, I made them come out and vote a few times. And I think in 2022, I am seeing a record number of minorities who had never voted want to come out and vote. Manga, let's stick to that minorities. That's one of my ta uh, my uh, facet of interest. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if candidates are in tune, and if you're not, that is totally okay. You're campaigning and you're very busy. 
I have been very focused on uh, engaging minority and immigrant communities uh, throughout Fairfax County. In fact, we uh, we hold uh, uh, meetings every month uh, trying to get a lot of different coalitions. As you know, Congressional District 11 is um, a population of about what 800,000 people out of which my numbers, if I accurately look at everything 2020 census, we have about 600,000 folks that are Asians, Blacks, African Americans and Hispanics. Uh, and this is what I would like to point out to everybody. Although these groups are minorities in the country, if you combine all of them, they're majority in 11th Congressional District. Yes. So uh, you, you mentioned that you're working with a lot of minorities. Can you tell me what is your outreach strategy? I mean, are you do you have some coalitions or, or how are you working that out? Well, there is no simple recipe to outreach minority communities. More often than I, well, during election time is the best time that I have been doing most of the outreach. And I alone talked to more than 51,000 voters waiting in line to vote in every early polling place. That's what I've been doing from morning until they closed. I never, I mean, I got, I got so many insults. People spat on my face, people threw trash on me because they did not want to see a brown woman being a Republican. I think a lot of Republican uh, leadership know what has happened in 2020, the way that uh, I've been all publicly uh, tried to humiliate and shame me. No, this public shaming is the weakness of people not wanting to accept that I am accepted by the people they think that is the Republican party that they have tainted their reputation as not minority friendly party. And I broke that record. Let's stick to outreach strategies and tactics. This is, this mean, is all part of, well, it's really like, if you understand, this is all part of outreach strategy. I mean, we, 100% Republicans, even if we voted, we would not win this district back. We need independence. We need people, the parents who care for their children. We need parents who want a school choice, who want their children to be protected. So how are we going to reach out to them? Taking every opportunity, be putting your, yourself out there to reach out to them, to let them know what is happening. Lot of times, many times that I have talked to these voters, they're just not even aware of what is happening in schools. And most of the time that I was actually reaching out to them while talking to them, letting them know, educating them what is happening. And I would say, while I'm talking to this, Google. That's how I was educating and getting people to vote for me in every polling place and the minorities and the minority communities that have never voted before have been going into those minorities, talking to them, understanding their issues. It is not a one, it is not a one ingredient. You cannot manufacture outreach. You people have to perceive the candidate also as genuine to open up to that candidate and to welcome into their communities. And that's exactly what I am doing. I'm giving hope. The communities that never wanted to come out and say, I feel abandoned. Now they want to come and tell me, I was feeling abandoned until I have met you. You give us hope. And now I think probably this is the right time to, for people to go check out my endorsements the diverse endorsements that I have received, that has to speak volumes what I am doing in terms of outreach. Outreach just doesn't mean going to a group where you're invited. Going into groups not uninvited. Go having courage to face people knowing that people may not accept you, but that's okay. 
but at least you're giving them opportunity to listen. Absolutely, if, my, if mainstream media is not putting a, 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 a conservative candidates on their show, then what is the outlet for uh, conservatives to go out and pick up other, I, other waters? Manga, I think you hit the nail on the head when you said um, it is good to go to peoples that you're invited because that's where you make the point across, but it is also great for us to go to communities that we are not very familiar with just get out of that comfort zone because they share the same values minority communities share the same values as republicans right. it's just a matter of getting out of our comfort zone and kind of talking to them let's stick to issues because i want to kind of get to the issues and we're uh, i want to be very mindful of your time as well so um, i know that um, uh, in the beginning you mentioned about health care and obamacare that didn't work what are your thoughts on healthcare freedom? I have that question um, question in our Facebook chat. We would love to know about your vision about ending mandates, especially the mask mandates and healthcare freedom. What are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. I am pro-freedom candidate. If you see my uh, website, it clearly states, I am America first, pro-parent and pro-freedom. I believe in total freedom as a, a, a legal immigrant who came to this country from India, I know what freedom is like to enjoy in this country. Maybe Americans are picking up on uh, losing their freedom now, but you and I have ex experienced firsthand not having that freedom and coming to this country and enjoying the freedom and now at the verge of losing them all. So who can better relate to being deprived of what you already have and being taken away that freedom? Absolutely, no vaccines. It, it should be absolutely people's choice whether they want to take vaccine or no vaccine. If the, the company should have no authority to fire people who do not want to be vaccine. They have their own rights to re refuse to take vaccine, but that should never become the rule for termination, period. Absolutely. And no, I don't believe in masks too. I mean, if somebody wants to wear a mask, that's fine, but I'm not a mask person. I don't believe in the mandates. Mandates are not the true freedom this constitution gives us. So period, um, all freedoms as prescribed in our constitution. And that's exactly what I love, being a legal minority. And I'm also a military mom. I know how important our national security is, border security is, how public safety is important, the parental rights. And I was, I think the only parent raising when I was raising my son uh, in, in this country, I completely refused to let my son attend any family life education classes because there was no curriculum that was given to parents to review what is being taught. Only thing is I can opt out. If I allowed them, my child to take those classes, I didn't have a choice what they were teaching. And I always had this suspect, no, that is co-parenting with me. I refused. This was 30 years ago. I said, I will not allow the schools to co-parent with me. I am going to teach my child in the culture that I know, in the conservative values that I and my husband carry. That's exactly what we want to teach our son. I think I was the only one back then, and I'm still the only one I, who would say, no, it should be an opt-in for a parent, not opt-out for family life education. I think that's exactly where the system uh, uh, has failed the parents and it's a disgrace. Manga, thank you. I think uh, our audience got the point, but I just wanted to make sure we get uh, to as many issues as we can. So our audience that are keenly listening to it, understand where you stand on these issues. Uh, so, let, me ask, 
So like, I think am I the only candidate who is so privileged for taking live questions? I think that shows people how much they really do love me. Thank you, audience, for being here. I know it has never happened with other candidates. I love you for that. And I, I take it as my privilege. And thanks for doing this. No, we, we get quite a few questions uh, every single session, sometimes more again, sometimes fewer. But um, uh, we do get questions. But let's uh, let's kind of stick to immigrant topics. I think um, you are a good candidate to kind of talk about uh, uh, immigration issues. So while uh, while we're speaking about what matters to immigrants, as an immigrant myself, I resonate with you. I've seen you sometimes talk about legal immigration process, including even H one B visas. I think I heard you speak about that. We need to, as you know, we need to actively reform our legal immigration process. Tell me, where do you think American immigration policies are failing and how will you continue to reform if you're the elected congresswoman? It's not only important for Indian Americans, but it's just important for everyone. I think Hispanic Americans are looking forward to having legal immigration process reformed so they can live here legally. Right. Number one, this illegal immigration and hundreds and thousands and millions of them flowing through our borders. I think that is the first one that must stop. More than the legal immigrants, it is the illegal immigrants that are hurting this country. I think we need to set our focus and priorities. What is hurting us most? We cannot be hungry for everything at one time. We have to pick and prioritize what is most important in the immigration system that we really want to tackle first. The illegal immigration and closing the borders is the first thing that I think this country needs focus on. Anytime there are illegal immigrants and what is the policy we have right now? Catch and let go. After 10 days, they are let go into the society and they keep coming back again and again. And Anytime there are criminals that we cannot keep them for too long in our jails, they are the ones who are into drug cartel, human trafficking, child trafficking, and our public safety is compromised. There are so many things that we really need to start focusing on unless we first stop illegal immigration. That is one of my America first. Before I worry about the legal immigrants, I want to worry about the illegal immigrants coming into this country who are criminals and causing problems and safety issues in this country. And what about the amount of tax dollars that we are spending on these illegal immigrants? So, so I think my first thing on, would be to tackle. So your focus is going to be securing the borders and increasing the national security. I'm assuming that's what you mean. Absolutely. Mean. That would be my first priority pick. And then I can go drill down to other immigration reforms that are necessary to be sure. Handle. I think I, I get them. Uh, I wanted to make sure I clarify to our audience that you're very focused on strong defense system. You want to kind of uh, make sure our borders are safe and secure. So yes, we need to reform our legal process for sure, but we also need to have strong borders so this illegal immigration does not continue. Otherwise, this will be a revolving door. Um, Manga, again, sticking to the same, same topics, I think this is a unique opportunity for me to kind of get uh, an understanding from an Indian American. Um, I've always considered fostering stronger economic trade and security partnership with America's natural ally like India, it is mutually beneficial for the largest and biggest democracies of the world. However, to my biggest disappointment, recently India abstained on a US-sponsored UN Security Council resolution that deplores in the small, strongest terms about Russia's aggression against Ukraine with New Delhi, basically saying that dialogue is the only answer to setting differences and disputes. I mean, I was disappointed. I made it extremely clear. I was invited to a couple of panels to talk about it. Just like you, I'm pro-America, America first. And I had strong feeling that India would go with America because America's natural ally. But I was very disappointed. What was your reaction to that? Well, 
we need to understand the region first. Russia's aggression is condemned by the entire world. And India took a stand that they wanted to be neutral. We cannot dictate anything to other countries. Now let us shift the same exact focus, what we should have done as the world leader. How can you send an incompetent puppet like Jerry Connolly for a, such an important dialogue that he needs to have to put United States in a higher pedestal as a world leader. And he failed. Jerry Connolly constantly fails. And we still keep doing the same thing, going and voting for the same man again and again. That's where I want to bring the focus back. We should have clearly been that leader and kept our position as a world leader only because of Jerry Connolly's failed diplomatic talks with Ukraine, India got that limelight. We should have been that leader to have that dialogue and to have, of course, do I, do I object to peace talks? No, we are United States of America. When we have to use a whip, we use, we use a whip because we are the biggest military force in the world. We are the strongest. When we need to use a whip, we whip. When we used to need, when we, there is a need to use a dialogue, we need to use a dialogue. And that's where Jerry Connolly failed. And we should have, coming from the Indian background, just you said, that's exactly what we Indians do and think trying to understand the region, trying to understand their history and what exactly you need to analyze to make it successful. I think Jerry Connolly doesn't understand uh, uh, history of any region. I mean, he's a failure sitting in foreign house, foreign affairs committee. He's a failure in every area that he is now sitting in as a chairman or a subcommittee chairman. So that's where things are. I think we need to uh, now start establishing, no, we are the world leaders and we will remain the world leaders. And for that to happen, we need to let go of Jerry Connolly and defeat him. Manga, I think, um, I mean, definitely, I, uh, again, you are the candidate, so you've researched a lot more on Jerry Connolly than I ever could have. But I think a lot of our Congress uh, uh, women and men, they're not very good at geopolitics. I think geopolitics is extremely crucial to have a depth analysis to kind of understand why each and every country is making a strategic move. I think one takeaway message is every country is looking out for themselves and their sovereignty, which is actually not wrong. But that that's what tells the Americans that we got to be America first. We got to focus on pro-America. Uh, another reason for us to have an extensive understanding of uh, of geopolitics and elect a candidate that can actually understand that portion. Exactly, we need to start electing people. I mean, before there was not this diverse communities and especially you take Virginia 11th district, which is a majority minority district, okay? And so is in a lot of states in this United States of America. So how do we deal with geopolitics? We need to start having diversity, just not for namesake, also in politics, so that they understand. What is the point putting Jerry Connolly in Foreign Affairs Committee and him not understanding any geopolitics and analysis or any history of region to actually resolve any issues? And he is creating more issues because he is not exposed to. We need diversity even on the house floor. And I think that's where I think minorities are very disappointed and feel left alone. Now being, they feel they're abandoned. 
That's exact words they use. We feel abandoned. Nobody understands our issues. We need somebody to represent us. And that candidate is you because I resonate with them. I let them talk. Understanding their issues is very important for us to grow as conservatives. They're all conservatives. They're all conservatives, regardless of which community you go into, they're all conservatives and they believe in conservative values, but they feel abandoned because we don't know their issues. We have to go into their closer circles, inner circles and give them the faith, that hope that yeah. they are not abandoned. I think Manga, you, you brought up a very good point. Diversity is not all about race, um, creed, right? It's about your thoughts. I think that's where when you're talking about um, being on the house floor or Senate floor, you need to have people that have diverse backgrounds with different thought processes. Not necessarily we need diverse uh, uh, brown women or black males or any of that nature. It's very focused on uh, who has the different thoughts that can actually bring something more to the plate than we currently have. Let, uh, also, let's go to I mean, I want to make another point. I mean, I want to underline it. Where you have been raised, you have learned different techniques of dealing with issues. That is also the diversity. It is not the color as you said, but yeah. coming from a certain region, gives you a leverage because you have been exposed to it. You have seen it all your life, how to deal with those issues. And you have been so grounded and involved in those issues. And there are so many other communities that are like yourself. So that is the answer. I mean, people actually knowing the region is also very important uh, in a geopolitical arena. Manga, I think that could be one of the reasons why several Chinese immigrant people that came from communist countries supported the past president that we had because they could foresee what could potentially happen to America if there are no strong border walls, uh, if socialism kicks in, if Marxism kicks in. Uh, I think that's where uh, that's another reason why President Trump g gained so much of m minority uh, momentum. So let's let's go to uh, education, uh, Manga. I have a speaking to my best friend this afternoon, and I even told uh, my best friend that for all of us Americans, especially immigrants, um, education is paramount and it is critical for our upward mobility. And the TJ Coalition, as you know, has been fighting tooth and nail to reinstate the objective test. Ironically, my daughter is a raising ninth grader. So she's also in that limbo of whether she'll take it or she won't take it. And as you know, the case is in Supreme Court right now. My question to you is, are you working alongside with TJ coalition members and Fairfax County uh, parents on this crucial matter? Absolutely. I am all in support of TJ parents and the parents in Fairfax County Public Schools. I'm, I'm, I'm a pro-parent candidate. I have been a pro-parent candidate since even before coming into politics since 2015. That's how important this issue is for me. I have been raising activism in this community. What is coming our way? Now, everybody is aware of what is on our plate. Let these activists keep doing it now that their focus is on these issues. I want to focus on how to change this environment for better and for good and forever. And when I, my focus is right now to get elected so that I can remove the cause of all these issues that we are now fighting against. We are not only, we are now trying to fix the problems that are created. Now, now my attitude is, and my effort is to remove, go to the root cause of the problem and remove the cause. And Department of Education is the root cause that has been promoting these CRD issues, social engineering and transgenderism uh, 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 curriculum. You call it, you name it, whatever we are going through in our community today, may it be even uh, TJ. Why, it, this, uh, this was happening for a very long time in Ivy League schools. 
in the admissions. After TJ, that's exactly where, again, you will start focusing on the admissions of your students in colleges. So this is a never ending cycle of fighting with the system that was created to cause this kind of di discrimination among communities. Now, now I have moved on with a realization. Fighting is good, but now removing the root cause is what it requires in this country for right now. I mean, I couldn't insist more on saying we need to remove it from the roots. And Absolutely. that is Department of Education. And that's exactly where it started with my activism experience since 2015. I have no doubt in my mind that that's exactly what I want to do when I'm getting elected. So my focus would be to get elected, go remove. No, I agree. Department I agree. of Education. Yeah. And I think uh, with all the parents, active, um, act activists coming forward, I'm now I'm starting to notice that elite universities such as University of Chicago and MIT, they're starting to reinstate SATs as a form of objective measurements. After they fully embrace the woke, full-blown holistic approach, they're kind of coming and trying to meet midway. So whatever activists are doing, whatever parents are doing is really working. Absolutely. So it is a must. It is a must. And they, we have to send our strong voices to the public to these universities to let them know it is unacceptable. We will not remain woke, we are awake. That's the message we want to give the universities. And of course, uh, as long as we have the uh, radical liberal uh, congressmen and women sitting in Congress, uh, we won't be able to get done. So discussing is not what we want to focus on. Removing such people from power is what we need to start focusing on. And this election is not about winning nomination. It is about defeating the radical liberal elected congressmen and women that are anti-America, anti-parents and anti-freedom. And that only takes a period and a freedom, freedom fighter like me to go in and fight. And I, I want to just make a statement here. Uh, Congressman Rob Whitman in 2020, while endorsing me, he made a statement. Manga alone is, if you see my um, website, you can read his statement. He says, uh, Manga alone is enough to take on and fight the squad, you know, and that is the greatest compliment I have uh, received. Now, uh, realization is just not enough. Fighting for our rights is what we need to do. And unless you are not standing on the house floor, you are on the radical liberal menu to be served. Absolutely. While we're talking about endorsement, Manga, uh, I think Rob Whitman is a great gentleman and has been a great congressman. You also received endorsements from Chuck Smith, Amanda Smith, and so on and so forth. Are you looking for someone to be uh, someone from 11th Congressional District that kind of aligns with your values or issue alignment to endorse you? Are you looking forward to that or are you happy with what you've done? <laughs> of course. If you, if you see my endorsements, the delegate candidates who I helped during 2021, every single day I would, from morning until night, I would go to every voting place and I would promote the delegate that's running in that district, along with promoting our down the ballot governor, lieutenant governor and our AG. So that's exactly what I did. And they all recognize that how much of effort I mean, selfless effort that I have put in. You know, uh, I went there purely, but of course, people recognize my face uh, as a candidate from 2020 because they have seen me so often. And there were times that even in places when people, when they heard that I was there talking to candidates, I mean, to voters, a lot of people used to come in cars, uh, uh, want to shake hands with me, talk to me, and thank me. And I've converted more soft Democrats and independents to vote for Republicans just by virtue of being, genuinely being there. Fakeness is 
wokeness and wokeness is racism yep, yep. and then so i you. was putting my face to these voters and they do recognize uh, that effort as a genuine effort and they accept me and yeah going forward i think i'm the strongest candidate still yeah, absolutely. Manga, so what is your strategy for winning primaries? I mean, this time we have multiple candidates and everyone seems to be a very strong candidate like yourself. So do you have any specific strategy for winning the primaries? Well, I'm whatever I have been doing since 2020, reaching out to communities, reaching out to people that don't, don't think like me. I am not afraid to go talk to Democrats or independents. I, I, I have no issues listening to their point of view and to explain my own and then going into minority communities. I mean, yes, was I insulted publicly um, uh, in front of thousands of people? Yes. The cause is bigger than my insults. And these insults that this radical leftist who are disappointed that me being a brown woman uh, I, I, is a Republican by choice, uh, they can have their disappointment and anger, but their anger and disappointment will not change my resolve. So Manga, if I hear I you right, if I heard you right, so your strategy for winning primaries is uh, going out there and reaching out to soft Democrats and immigrants and kind of align your values with them. Yes. So you know, that, I think that's a sound strategy. So um, Manga, we are at the tail end of the program. The hour really goes by fast. So let me know, what did I miss asking you? Uh, because uh, I always say when you have an hour, you try to get through uh, your background. I want to make sure our voters understand where you're coming from, also understand uh, issues that are very pertinent, not only to you, but also your constituents. And more often than that, I tell candidates that what you think are major issues may not be what your constituents think. So I want to make sure we're aligned. But on the same token, if you think I asked, um, I missed asking you any crucial questions, or you want to elaborate on any other issues, please take the next one, a minute or two and elaborate on those. Well, I think we have touched several points that are key to winning this district back. And I couldn't reiterate more that this election is just not about winning a nomination, winning the firehouse primary. We are not bigger than the country. We are not bigger than the constituency. We are not bigger than the issues that we have on hand. The only recipe that I want and I embrace is just being genuinely connected with the constituents and the voters. Let them decide. They are intelligent people. I'm not in this politics today just because I have a political dream. No, I came into politics by, I became an activist by accident. I became a political activist by accident. And I also became a politician by accident. I didn't choose to, but I was asked to be in politics. And it took several people to convince me that I must run for this office. The, the first person was Senator Ted Cruz who even mentioned that I, I should be in politics and I should run for office. And then it was Matt Tron, who is a very close friend, you also know him. So when he suggested, I thought he was suggesting me to become a political activist. And I tried that being that too. And then importantly to say, the one who put the last nail in that coffin was, Alice Butler shot. She made me, she gave me after talking to me for two hours, trying to convince me why I should run. Then at the end of that conversation, she gave me a folder, she opened it and said, sign it. Mm -hmm. I did not even know what I was signing. She said, these are the, these are the filing papers. I said, what position, what am I signing for? I mean, what are these? She said, Love, trust me. Do you love your mama? She became, she wore so many hats for me. A mother, a mentor, a, a sister, a well-wisher, a friend, a voter. 
many hands that she wore in mentoring me, in helping me in my political career, she said, trust me, sign these papers. Then her husband walked in and said, Manga, I've been listening to the conversation. Sign it. You would not regret. People will be happy that you are the candidate. I'm here by accident, not by uh, with a political dream. I think I come across as a very genuine person. Uh, you cannot uh, manufacture genuineness unless you really care for people. And I think uh, people are intelligent. People know uh, what they are getting out of me or where I have been, what I have been doing. So uh, fooling people is not a recipe uh, to win elections. I think this country more than ever, ever need a patriot. They don't need an aspiring politician to be removing a sitting politician. You know, it doesn't mean at all. Exactly. Exactly. We I, need to elect patriots. And I think I leave that decision to people. They are not yes. fools. Uh, I totally, completely agree with their decisions. And the only ingredient that I have is genuineness. And I let people taste that uh, ingredient uh, if they would like to taste me. And I think there are so many that uh, have taken that flavor, what I am like. And I leave it up to people. Manga, this might be a good time to talk uh, tell about web, website and convention details. I, I don't think a lot of um, folks, uh, if you're not really into party planning process, you may not understand rank the voting choices uh, uh, as they come to the convention. Do, you might want to elaborate on that process. Yes, definitely, Sri Leka. Thank you for asking that and having me talk about it. Uh, go to mangaforcongress.com. That is M-A-N-G-A-F-O-R congress.com and the May 7th primary, firehouse primary details are on my landing page. Uh, it is University of North America. Maybe nobody has heard that address is there. The timing is 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And the voting choice is the ranked voting choice. So come vote from uh, uh, Manga and you will never be disappointed. I am your candidate. And I, I tell also people, I am not a, a hammer that's used to chisel, but I am a dynamite to break the mountain called Jerry Connolly. And you can trust the dynamite to break the mountain and you will never be disappointed. The dynamite always is a dynamite and you cannot change the, uh, uh, um, and, and, you know, the characteristics of a dynamite and trust me and please do keep voting for me and donations are a big point and definitely I was one of the uh, candidates who raised most money and who has most money uh, in uh, cash also so uh, I, I'm a forerunner and I already had gained $300,000 worth of name recognition and I'm only adding on to it as uh, building a home. I am halfway through the race. Uh, you cannot do a long jump for a 100 meter race. You have to run the race to finish that 100 meters finish line and I'm already uh, ahead of everybody in that 100 meters race. And you have, uh, people have invested in me already. Uh, their emotions, their votes, their money, and I will never disappoint my voters. Every dollar, every dime that is uh, donated to my campaign, I'm going to fight $100 for a dime. So uh, you know uh, who to bet on, and I am your candidate. Vote for me. I am Manga for Congress, and I will be your servant leader and not a politician. And I'll always be connected to my constituents. Manga, thank you for the great closing remarks. I thoroughly personally enjoy this conversation. It's always nice to chat with a fellow Indian American woman. Yes. Um, I, I, I say that um, Fairfax GOP has been keeping me very busy. So I, I have not been getting out uh, 
uh, to speak to my own fellow Indian American girlfriends as much as I do. I used to. So this is a great conversation. I wish you nothing but the very best. I look Thank forward you. to working with the, or any winner that comes from 11th Congressional District. I live in 11th Congressional District now, thanks to redistricting that yes, happened. I wanted to say that as a closing remark, welcome to the 11th District. You have been living in a quiet, nice district and uh, your Congresswoman for the last three years has been flying under below the radar and now you are into the 11th district welcome into my district yes. and exactly. all this excitement of uh, jerry connelly trying to take this country down and let us all partner and let's all work together and let us win this election on number eight so vote for me and i'm yes. your candidate manga uh, i said i have vested interest in getting the very best candidate uh, out of this primaries to face off with Connolly. So I'm very interested in to see how this uh, race is going to turn out. So viewers, I thank you for joining us. You were very engaged throughout this conversation. A very happy Easter to you, your friends and your families and your communities. Next week, we have Barbara Banks on Friday at 6 p.m. She's also running for 11th Congressional District. And we have uh, Kezia Tunnel, who is running for 8th Congressional District on Saturday. And we have Jim Miles, who is a, one of our federal judge, and he was running for 11th Congressional District on Sunday. So this entire next weekend is going to be a full fun with all the candidates getting to know the issues and what, what, uh, what issues that resonate with you. So I continue to thank you for actually tuning in. Uh, please continue to support conversations that count, uh, continue to subscribe. And if you have any questions, please don't ever hesitate to reach out to us. God bless you all. God bless the candidates that are out there running um, and putting their heart and soul out there. And God bless America. Thank you all. Have a wonderful Easter, uh, Easter night. Thank you. A happy Easter and God bless America.